Hi friends! Welcome to Rhubarb Patch Studio. I'm Leah Noel. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I am finally going to deliver the glorious whip parade that I promised you a long time ago. Um, I think part of uh, what has taken me so long is I just kind of grapple a little bit with um, how many whips I have. Um, you know, I waffle between feeling bad about it and not feeling bad about it and um, <clears throat> you know, it's just one of those things. And um, I know I'm not the only one who goes through that. So today is going to be good practice for me to just, just let it be what it is and not be hard on myself. Um, <clears throat> and the other, the other side of that is I have so many whips um, that I just can't touch all of them in one year. So some of these whips you haven't seen in a while, but they have like zero progress. So um, I like watching whip parades, even if I, um, even if somebody doesn't work on something. Um, so I'm just gonna do that because I like to watch that. Um, <clears throat> and these are my projects, so I get to see them whenever I want. But um, if you like some of these things that I'm working on, it's just kind of nice to see them every once in a while because they're not. They're not in, you know, your whip pile. They're in my whip pile. That's how I feel about other people's projects too. Like I get attached to other people's projects. So I like to see them uh, whenever there's an opportunity. So, um, so I do have, I th think over 60 whips. Um, and, um, it's been a really busy year. Um, looking looking back on 2022, um, I do actually have 15 finishes, and that's not including FFOs, like things that I had finished previous to 2022 and then like fully finished it this year. Um, I didn't count any of those. Um, <clears throat> for some reason, I don't keep tally of those. Um, maybe I should, I don't really know, but I don't at this at this point. This is just stitching related. So 15 finishes and 19 new starts. Um, I do have two starts planned for New Year's. So I have to decide if that's going to be New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. I think I'm going to do one on one day and one on the other day. You'll have to uh, stay tuned. Uh, for future updates about what those new starts are, but um, today the plan is just to kind of give you a run through of all my current whips, and that is whips, I think in every sense of the word. If I have not, if I'm on the fence about abandoning it, um, I'll let you know, because um, there I think there are a couple in, in my whip pile that I'm thinking about doing that. Um, there's, um, anyway, we'll just get into it. Um, and I'm going to try to keep my chatter down and I might also edit me putting things back in the bag because, you know, I might, I might just do that to, to make the video shorter. Okay. Um, all right, let's get into it. Um, so my first bag that I'm pulling from is my travel bag. This is what I took to Christmas with me. Um, and I did not work on anything over Christmas, honestly. I, I was just too, it's too much fun on. This is actually a new start. Um, you haven't seen this yet. This is called Love Letter to the Cross Stitch Nation by Heartstring Samplery. This is what it will look like, sort of. I am making changes as I do. Um, this is going to be a gift for my son's teacher. And, sorry, hopefully that wasn't loud. Um, <clears throat> 
This is on a mystery linen by um, by Color and Cotton, and I've changed the um, the cuff colors. Uh, I made the blue a little bit richer and a little bit more teal, and I changed the pink to a yellow. And the hands, um, I'm gonna do some different hand colors than, than what are on here. They're still gonna be diverse, but they're just gonna be just slightly different from what's on that photo, so that's number one. Next up is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. This is the model. Um, I'm cutting out this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'll either move this one up here or I might rearrange um, the blocks. But right now I have all of this done and I'm working on this block. This is on 16 count Haven by Picture This Plus. I'm using mostly called for floss, um, but I have subbed out some of the black for different shades of blue. And I'm going to be making the birds and other animals um, different shades of dark, dark blue. So this is Hawk Run Hollow, Village at Hawk Run Hollow. I'm also, um, I said I'm using called for colors, but I'm not necessarily using them where the designer tells me to use them. I'm kind of mixing them up um, as I need it. So because my fabric color is cool, whereas this fabric color is very warm, um, sometimes you just, you come across a floss color that just doesn't really um, work with your fabric choice, you have to adjust. So that's what's happening. Next one is Seashell Treasures. It's a Dimensions Petite. And I'm stitching this. Um, originally I thought I would stitch it as a gift for my husband's mom, for my mother-in-law. Um, I don't know if I'll give it to her, actually. Um, just because I don't know that she would really like to have it. <laughs> I think she would like that I'm doing it. I don't know that she would like it to have it. So um, I think I might just finish it and maybe turn it into, like, like I might put her name on it and her birth year. Um, and just keep it in our family for my husband. You know, like I might do that. So this is my progress on this. Um, it's really slow going, honestly. I don't know what it is about these dimensions, petites, but they're really, um, I don't know. Sometimes they feel like a slog to get through, but it is pretty. And I actually want to finish that this year if possible. I mean, um, 2023. I would like this to be finished. Next is Barbara Anna, um, the Portuguese bird sampler. This is what the model looks like. But I am doing a vibrant color conversion. Um, something a little bit more um, a little bit I don't know how to describe it uh, a little bit more colorful so um, this is on a fabric by Lakeside Linens it's called Lilac something it's very light um, it's a lavender, it's, a, it's more of a warm lavender. And I just have the border started so far. Um, parts of it I'm going to be stitching in hand 
I like the border and just with one strand over two um, because it it doesn't need this is on 36 counts so it doesn't need much um, I don't know it doesn't need oomph in the border um, but some parts I am going to be stitching two over two um, it's just going to depend on where in the sampler so I'm I'm experimenting on a few different things and I'll probably be incorporating some specialty stitches and um, just overall having fun last thing in my travel bag is a whip that shouldn't be a whip but it is um, this is polar bears oops Mill Hill kit polar bears buttons and beads I'm really far on this. Um, I just have the beading left to do and I'm most of the way done beading and I wanted to get this done by the end of this year and just, I don't think it's gonna happen. And I'm trying to be okay with that. You can see, I think these big white matte beads are a little bit strange, but when you look at it from a distance it's not super strange but all these empty spaces here if you can see that those are all beads so i just got to do some bead work and i like how it's turning out i think i mean especially from this distance it's just so pretty it's so pretty okay I've got my next stack here, which is this basket that I I keep next to my upstairs stitching station. And um, there's not really any rhyme or reason as to why these are in here other than they're what I've worked on recently and um, what, I, what I like to have ready. So first one is uh, called Fog by Art Mishka. It's basically full coverage, although a lot of those stitches are half, half stitches. And I am working on this, um, using the diagonal stitching, diagonal stitches method um, for practice, because I have some heaven and earth designs that I want to do um, and I wanted to try out the diagonal stitching um, before I get into my next heaven and earth and it's working out really really well so if you want to learn how to do diagonal stitching go over to Blitz Stitch. Uh, Brian has two tutorials that are excellent and um, I really enjoy his videos in general so go ahead and um, look down below in in the description of this video I'll have a link to his channel that's fog I just love how that looks this is such a happy piece I just love it okay next one is called first snowflakes by filigram that's what this looks like um, I am going to be replacing the words at the top and the words at the bottom to reflect the family that I am stitching this for. This is on 32 count Valor Linen. And here's my progress. The friends that I'm stitching this for live in a mountainous area, so. Next one is the first um, Prairie, School, Prairie Schooler Santa in a small series that I've just, you know, selected. So this is the one I'm currently working on, and um, I just showed this in a recent update. I am 
using a different color green. It's more, I don't know, seafoam, <laughs> seafoam green. And I am unsure if I like it or not. So I think that's kind of what holds me up. But this is a 40 count, um, 40 count, oh, it starts with an F. Feldspar. 40 count Feldspar linen, uh, one over two. There's my progress. So, I mean, I don't know. I think once I get everything together, I'll like it a little bit more, but we'll see. I might do the other ones in regular green or I, I don't know. I don't really get I like this fabric though for a wintry. I think I have another project that I'd like to do on another side of this. So we'll see. Next is a magazine pattern called Every Star. That's the picture. The words say, he knows every star and calls each one by name. And it's got a little deer here and a little village. I've been wanting to work on this one recently. I just haven't had the time to do it, so. But it's been calling to me. This is on 32 count antique white linen. And I'm using mostly called for flosses, but some of them I have converted to color and cotton just for a little bit of extra variegation in the sky and the snow and the trees. So that's my progress so far. And I totally did an oops on this. Um, this is a leisure arts pattern. And if you've ever read a leisure arts pattern, like they're they're really great. I love the way they're charted. But um, the, the, the key, can you see the key? Um, it tells you, it uses different symbols for quarter symbols and half symbols. Um, yeah, half, half symbols and quarter symbols and full X symbols, they, they all have different symbols. And what they don't tell you in the key box is that the half cross stitches are with only one strand, not two. Um, but sometimes if they use two, they'll make a little extra symbol to tell you that you should use two and not one. But when I started stitching this, I didn't realize that. And so all my half stitches, which is all of the sky, is done in two strands instead of one. So it's a lot darker. Um, and I'm just going with it because I don't. I don't want to start over. I would have to start over like from scratch and I, I'm just not willing to do that. So all right, this is called Fractor Friends by Shakespeare's Peddler. And there's the pattern. Um, I started this on 2 I started two things on 2-22-22, and that also happens to be my friend Mev's birthday, and um, she was a huge part of my floss tube, um, like getting going in floss tube and just really um, getting into the spirit of cross stitching, and so she's a very dear stitching friend to me, and so this this pattern. Um, reminds me of her and her and I. So um, this is going to be Mev and this is going to be me. 
and I did a floss conversion for, for this pattern. Um, I'm doing it on the thing is, is called charcoal. It's a 40 count charcoal linen. Um, I honestly don't have very much done. Um, but I did stitch on this a couple days and um, it's all, it's a lot of solid stitching, but that's the color of one of the sleeves of the girls. So this is on a, I think charcoal, charcoal linen. Um, and I'm using a silk conversion, so I just started on Mev's sleeve there. And Mev's floss tube videos are still up. She has not made a floss tube video in a while, so um, I'll put her. I'll link her down below so you can check out her um, her channel. She still shows some really amazing things, so still worth revisiting. And um, and I think about her every time I work on this. The second project that I started on 2-22-22 is this Star Wars kit. Um, it's called Luke and Darth Vader. It came with 14 count Black Ada, but I, this is a restart. This is, so this is a restart. <clears throat> I tried the, I tried 16 count Black Ada and it wasn't working for me. And so now I'm trying this 32 count black linen. And this is as far as I got. Not very far at all. I started in the middle and it's just hard. It's a, this is a hard one to work on. I think maybe it's the black linen um, or maybe it's how the floss looks on the black linen. It looks just kind of like I don't know. Like you can see the individual stitches. And I don't know how to I don't know how to make this more enjoyable, but I need to do that so that I can do it. I mean, it's just it's a relatively small chart. I mean, look in the middle. This is where I started. And I mean, I couldn't get very far. So I don't know what to do. If you have any suggestions, leave me a comment. This next one, um, I started as a reward to myself after I finished grad school. Um, I don't know what the name is. It's in a magazine. Um, it's, it's called Vintage Classic. M maybe it's by Anchor. Um, the, the magazine is a um, cross stitch collection, April 2011. Okay, um, a very nice stitching friend um, gave me her pattern from her magazine because I was looking for this. Um, I just love this so much. It's black work, um, and it just it speaks to me and um when i finished grad school i thought this would be the perfect thing to start after grad school and um it i haven't had enough like mental space to really work on this very much but um i wanted to start it at least so this cape um i'm not going to do red i'm going to do purple 38 34 um, this is one of my favorite purples. Um, I think my favorite purple is 154, but when I looked at it, it was just too close. It was just too dark. I needed something lighter. So, um, this is going to be a purple cape. And instead of doing black, I'm actually going to do a dark gray. And this is Victoria Motto Sampler Thread Forever Bewitched. So, um... It'll be a little bit, a little bit different, Let's see. And the fabric that I chose is an ivory 
Lugana. And I think this is 28. It's either, no, it might be 32. It's either 28 or 32 count. Um, this is all the farther I got. I had to start in the middle because I don't have much fabric. And I believe it goes this way. And you can see I have her hand done. Let me get this thread out of the way. So I have her hand and some little bits of her dress. This is not a project for the faint of heart. Um, I decided to do this as running stitch instead of back stitch. Um, there is actually an amazing stitcher who contacted me when I first showed this design and she also fell in love with it at first sight and had to source it and she stitched it up like right away and we were emailing back and forth and she was showing me pictures and I was just like oh my goodness amazing beautiful work and she suggested doing the running stitch instead of the back stitch and I thought yeah that makes a lot of sense because with a back stitch sometimes you get that separation between your legs uh, and like your stitched legs and with the running stitch you go up and over and then back you kind of retrace your steps and you get more of a clean line but <sighs> I might have to abandon the running stitch idea and just do um, just do back stitch because it's easier for my brain but I would like to I would like to get back to this. Um, I'm not sure when I will have the time um, or the mental space, but I I just I'm glad for now I'm just glad that it's it's in my wood pile. This next one I call Sleeping Bunny, but it has a different name. It's by Madame Chantilly. April Dolce Dormir. That's what it looks like. It reminds me of me and my parents. <laughs> and that's me, and that's my parents. I am stitching this on 28 count cocoa. Gingham by Weeks Dye Works. Super fun fabric. Um, this is where I am so far. It's so cute. Um, I think it'll look really good on this gingham. I am changing the flosses um, like I do. The green is a variegated, variegated floss. Um, you'll see the rest of the colors, I guess, as I stitch more. I'm not totally, I'm not totally decided on what the what the colors will be, so. Um, this is by Madame Lafay, Madame Lafay, um, Bienvenue en Normandie. I love this one. I love that Holstein. I grew up around Holsteins, so they have a place in my heart. Um, I'm probably going to change the Normandy to a town name. I'm stitching this on 32 count mocha, I think light mocha by Zweigart. Oh, yeah, no, 36 count light mocha 
by Zweigart using the called for DMC. That's how far I am. This cow has a lot more stitching in it than, than meets the eye. <laughs> it's a huge cow. Next one is called the John Murray Sampler by The Scarlet Leather. Um, this is... Is it not focusing very well? I don't know why it's not focusing very well. Um, so this is actually, this is the first reproduction sampler that I couldn't walk away from. Um, and I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's the weird house. Um, maybe it's like just how it's just so full. It's so full. I just love everything about it. I don't know why it's not focusing. Anyway, um, I'm stitching this in hand. It's 36 count one over two. Uh, with my own silk conversion. And this is how far I am. So it's going to be very springy, light, light and springy. The fabric I think is, um, it's a Zweigart. It's like one of the I don't know what it is. I can find out if you really need to know, but it's a Zweigart fabric. Okay, the next several um, in this basket are just, um, are, are projects that I keep on scroll frames um, or Q-snaps and I keep them in the other room but I keep the floss pack next to me um, to encourage me to go and pick it up. So um, this one is the stocking that I'm working on for myself. This is the um, Candy Cane Santa stocking. And I really wanted to work on this um, a lot this year. And I just, I couldn't get to it. I just couldn't. So many things happened this year. Um, all right. Some guy running past my house with his dog and my windows are wide open and I'm sitting here like, oh, look at me cross my cheek. Okay. So this is my, um, my stocking. I guess I can unroll it a little bit since this is a whip can see the whole thing most of it anyway okay so there's the top so I do have quite a bit left to do on this so um, there's the top and the middle and I don't have any of the back stitching done yet So you can see I'm just working on the bottom. So my plan is I want to finish out the bottom, get all this back stitching done, and then work up and finish the top. All right, um, I just got a stack of these ones that are on scroll frames and Q snaps, and I just decided I, I just can't unroll all of them. I'm sorry. Um, but, um, it is what it is. Okay, so, Jingle Bell's Christmas Tree Farm. Um, this is by the Victoria Sampler. Love this. This is a gift for my middle sister, and it is a finish goal for 2023. And I think I can do it. I really do. Um, it was originally going to be a finish goal for this year, for 2022, but didn't happen. 
and that's okay. Here is where I am. I forgot to bring something for the back. Okay, so here's where I am. And this whole bottom part is finished. So I'm just working on this section here and um, I'm actually hoping to work on this a lot in the next couple months. Um, hopefully, hopefully you'll see more of this on my channel. All right, this is Southward Bound by Leisure Arts. Nope. <laughs> this has two patterns in this booklet. So this is the one I'm doing. I'm doing the Mallards. And I will eventually do the wood ducks, but um, for right now I'm just doing the mallards. And I'm doing this on a 32 count cauldron linen by Picture This Plus. I adore how this looks on the cauldron fabric. It's just, I feel like it's just perfect. I love it. Next we have this, um, Pattern. I don't know what the name is, but I'm just calling it Sparrow. It's by um, a designer. Um, it's a Russian designer, and I just don't know. I don't know um, how to give you the information, so. Um, I'm stitching this on 32 count um, raw, no, natural linen um, by Zweigart, and this is how far I am. I am using my own over-dyed conversion. It's, um, it's charted for DMC, but I'm just using overdyes. I'm not like 100% happy with my floss selection on this one, to be honest, but um, I think once the whole thing is done, it's going to look really good next to the companion piece that inspired the colors, so I think it'll be okay. This is another finished goal for 2023. And actually, I, I'm using Pattern Keeper on this one, and I'm 45% 45, 45 done, or um, maybe more. So. Okay, next one is called Pavain for These Times by Long Dog Samplers. Um, this is my working copy, and I divided it into nine pages. This is where the page breaks are. Um, I'm trying to complete a whole page at a time before I kind of move on to the next page, because I'm stitching this, this with my friend Jenny, and she that's how she does it, and she is, like, super good about staying within the page breaks. Um, I'm not good at it staying with the page breaks but I'm trying really hard to just page complete so I've already finished the middle I had to start in the middle and I am moving on to this section here I'm using a silks for you silk PR 132 and I love I love 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 this whip. I love it. It's 
So you probably see a lot of this one um, as the year progresses because I'm trying to I'm trying to keep up with Jenny. Like I'm trying so hard to keep up with Jenny. She's already got two page finishes. I'm on like I don't know. I'm maybe halfway done with the second page, so I gotta I gotta keep up. This is called The Annual Border by The Drawn Thread. I bought the kit on their website, which I highly recommend if you like, um, if you like what the model looks like and you don't want to pay for whole skeins of lots of specialty threads um, because their kits come with just just as much thread as, um, as what's called for. No extra. So this one is done one over two on 32 count khaki. Um, might be, it might be, I think it says khaki, but it really feels like raw, like raw linen. And um, I wouldn't normally stitch one over two on 32 count because I like a fuller coverage, but I'm using the kit supplies and so I just need to, I just need to trust. I just need to trust. And that's not one of my strengths, but I am trying. So we're doing this um, exactly as called for. Um, it's, I started this in my grandma's birthday month and um, because it reminds me of her and I, I might keep it, I might give it to her, I haven't decided. I'll probably just let her decide. So. All right, this one is the Noel Sampler by Brenda Gervais. Um, I was just looking to see if it was with Thigh Needle and Thread, but it just says Brenda Gervais on here, so. The Noel Sampler. I'm using 32 count Arctic by Picture This Plus, and I'm using all the called for floss plus some specialty threads, like sparkly stuff and maybe even whisper. So, let's see how it goes. Um, I don't think I've made any progress since I showed this to you last time. But I really like the way it looks on Arctic. Um, it's really easy to stitch on. I modified that big house. Um, can you see the satin stitches? I just made satin stitches on the house. And I haven't filled, I haven't filled the door all the way because I'm debating about whether to do the wreath in French knots or whisper, like evergreen colored whisper. So if you have any thoughts about that, just put them in the comments. I'd be happy to hear your thoughts. And um, I'm putting some sparkly threads in the snowflakes. Not all of them, but some of them. Um, and so there'll be snowflakes around here and everything. So just, just fun. This one is called Arc of White by Tempting Tangles. Um, this is restarted for me. Um, I originally did start it on a dark blue fabric um, because I, I just love the way this looks, but it was too hard for me to stitch. Um, I had a really hard time seeing the holes in the fabric. So I had to, um, I'm stitching this with my friend Amy. Um, Amy loves toads and She's using a really pretty, um, I don't know if it's wood smoke or something by Lakeside Linens. Anyway, it's really pretty. So I was just inspired to go with a more brown woodsy kind of fabric. And so um, 
This is um, 32 count Cyprium um, by Picture This Plus. And I also did a floss. I just picked different flosses. The white is the same. It's um, the same pearl silk, pearl by Dinky Dyes or something. Um, but the browns and the greens, and I even put a yellow in there. Um, I'll put some golden oranges. It'll be really pretty once it's all done. This looks a little strange, I think, the, the yellow. But I think once I have everything down here, it's going to look natural. <laughs> I just want it to look natural. But anyway, this has been really great. And since I changed the fabric, it's been like night and day. I mean, just really fun to stitch on. I don't dread it. I actually like it. Um, and I'm using a ball tip pen. No, ball tip needle. Um, and that's also been really helpful. So All right, this is called Flora and Fauna by Willow Hill Samplings. They're on Etsy. Um, this is a gift from a friend. And um, I am doing a little bit of personalization as I do. Um, this fox down here. Okay, I was interrupted by the dishwasher for a second. So um, anyways, I was saying that um, this little fox on the bottom, it reminds me of our dog, Teddy, who we we miss dearly. Um, and so this is kind of my Teddy sampler. And um, there's been a lot of elements that I'm trying to just change a little bit. Um, maybe redesign a little bit and it's been slowing me up um so this is as far as I am it's I don't know why it takes so long for me to do it but I need to get back to this like I really need to get back to this so so on 40 count Valor by Picture This Plus. I love this color. Um, a lot of these motifs remind me of where we live right now, which is kind of why I'm like changing the colors on some of these birds and the butterflies and um, the, the lilies. Um, I'm also changing to tiger lilies instead of white calla lilies. And so... Um, I'm just making a whole big project of it and it when I when I just don't have any mental energy um projects like this suffer so um I'm trying to just what I've been doing um this year is I've been working on the ground because I can just do that <laughs> I can just do that so okay All right, last but not least in my stitching basket by my upstairs stitching spot is one of my very favorite projects, which is Charlotte Mills 1844 by Fox and Rabbit. I'm using all the called for floss. Um, I did change the fabric out. It's, um, I am using a 40 count brick by Fiber on a Whim. And I can never get the color to show up true on camera. So it is very orangey. Um, that's, so if I hold it back like this, it is a pretty good representation of what the color is. Um, you can see it's kind of splotchy. There's browns and um, oranges, terracotta, um, tan. Um, so this is actually a pretty good representation of how how the fabric looks. It's a little less um, noticeable in person than it is on camera because you know how cameras like they just pick up the, that contrast so much more um, than it does in person. So anyway, um, this is 10% complete. 
and that's my progress. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to complete this top border so that I know how many stitches are just in the border. Um, and I'm thinking about doing um, this side and maybe all the way down, but I don't, I don't think I'll actually stick to that. But it would just be nice to know how many stitches are just in the border because it's most of, it's like half the stitching probably. Okay, I'm restocked now. Did I? Sorry, just looking to see if it looks tipped. Sorry. Anyway, um, okay, I restocked. I thought I would just kind of knock out all of the projects that I have on scroll frames. Um, and I know there's a couple downstairs that I can get um, in a little while. But first of all, um, so... Um, I started this last New Year, Amelia Boyce, 1829. Um, I was originally going to do this on a different fabric, but when I got it in person, it was just like way too dark. Um, so I had to just kind of, um, find something else that works. So now I'm doing this on 40 count C, um, Okay, it's a Lakeside Linens, Lakeside Linen, <laughs> I can't remember what it is, but it's like a light blue and I think there's a C, like S-E-A in it, in the name. Um, I started in the middle, I like to start in the middle. I have all of the um, Avera Spa. I am subbing out a couple because I, because I do that. Um, I am subbing out a couple just to give it more, um, less of an antique look and more bright. So um, I just started with the church steeple, that's like the center mark. And then I just love this. I absolutely adore this sampler. Um, this is the second, this is the second sampler, um, reproduction sampler that I just couldn't walk away from. Um, between this and John Murray, like, I don't know. There's a lot going on in both of the samplers. I think I do like a, a busy sampler, but um, so far, okay. Um, this is on 40 count, one over two. Some of this church, this cathedral, is done one over one. And by some, I mean like a huge portion of like the window and the, um, like all the little trim pieces there's a whole bunch of one over one and so i'm a crazy person and i'm doing a full cross over one with soie d'alger and it's it's a little chunky um so i was thinking about maybe ordering um the 103 silks for those one over one colors um, but I haven't committed to that idea yet. Um, if any of you are experienced, uh, in stitching with, um, just regular Soie d'Alger one over one on 40 count, and you have some tips, please let me know. Or if you think that 103 is really the best way to go, also let me know about that too. But I really like this sampler and I wish I had more time, um, to work on her, which is why she's still on a scroll frame and I haven't touched her more than once this year. So I really thought that this year was gonna be so much different um, in, in a different way, not in a bad way or a good way, just like, I just thought it was gonna be different. I thought I was gonna have a lot more time, but you know how that, how that happens. So I'm just gonna set this over here. Okay, the next one is called Scuba Duba. This actually isn't, <laughs> this isn't in a, in a frame or hoop or anything. Um, okay, so I started doing this when I first 
got into kitting up my own charts and I didn't realize at the time that that this chart uses buttons and there's like big buttons like these fish all these coins down here I think there's like a yeah more fit like multiple fish um the worm on the fishing hook that's this sea snake might even be a button I'm not really sure but anyways what attracted me is the octopus because that's my favorite animal but I mean the whole thing is just really cool and quirky so raise the roof designs was a company that's no longer um designing and it's a team uh and it's it's um Susie Reno well her name is Susie Reno on floss tube um and Teresa Vanette which most of you know is Kitten Stitcher or Shakespeare's Peddler. So they had a business together, designing business together, and um, they made really cute, quirky designs. And I actually got to meet Susie this summer. It was like the high, like one of the highlights of my summer. And she's so nice. And um, this is the only razor of designs that I have. And so I asked her to sign it for me. <laughs> so she signed it for me. <laughs> I felt like a fangirl. Um, so anyway, this, um, Susie was telling me that this actually has a companion piece. Um, Teresa actually designed this one and Susie um, designed the other one. And it's got this mermaid. Um, she actually had the model. She, she brought it out for me. So I got to see the model um, and it's so cute. Um, has a little mermaid and I forget what it's called maybe like off the hook or something um but if any of you have that pattern and you are willing to part with it um please let me know in the comments because i would really like to get a copy of that because i would like to do both of them okay back to my whip so let me show you my whip i decided to do this one over one on 28 count with two strands half stitch um and this is how far I got. So my dilemma here is this is technically a whip. I have to figure out what I want to do with it. Now that I know that I cannot actually complete it, um, I don't know what to do. I could maybe just do the waves part, the waves. There's like a, um, a sampler in there as in like, an alphabet in the waves um, and a dolphin in a boat. I could just do that part and I think it would look a little weird. Or I could just do everything except for the buttons and try to like design something to fit in there or I don't know. But I basically have not worked on this since 2018. So I have to figure out what to do with it so that it can not be a whip anymore. I don't want it to be a whip anymore. I could just like take this awesome little sun that I did and maybe just the waves part and like do something with just that. I don't know what to do. So help me decide, I don't know. I keep it rolled up in this tube because when I first started watching Floss Tube, um, I was watching um, Sarah, the Stitching Mommy. And this is how she does all of her projects. And I was like, I'm going to try that. And she, she was doing, you know, lots of two strands over, two strands over one on 28 count. And I was like, I want to try that. So I just, you know, <laughs> experiments don't always work out and that's okay. You learn from those things, or at least we try to. Okay, next. Okay. okay, just had to do some rearranging here. So this is Happy New Year by Victoria Sampler. You would think that I did this for New Year's, but I didn't. 
<laughs> I did this when I switched careers. It was more like new life kind of a thing. Uh, new year, new life kind of a vibe. So this is um, like a work anniversary kind of a thing. Um, I started at the top and I have the accessory pack. So um, I'm using all the called for flosses. I stopped at this band because I was gonna kind of change up some of the skin tones and um, and I just haven't done that yet. I am also, I, sit, I changed the fabric, which is a Nordic blue linen by Witch Elt. Um, it's kind of see-through and that's okay. Um, I just really love how vibrant blue it is and look at how those pop. Just, can you see the sparkle? So sparkly. Those fireworks. So sparkly. Yay. Yeah. So I need to get back to this. I, I really haven't worked on this and um, a couple years um because i was busy with other things at the time that this anniversary came up my son just came upstairs um but anyway i was saying that i haven't worked on this um in a while because my my work anniversary is in march and that was just a really busy time in grad school. Um, March is just not a good month to pick up on a, a project and think about what kind of skin color you want to put on those band members and everything. So it was just, it was just not an ideal situation to work on this. Um, but hopefully that gets more attention moving forward. Um, all right, last one that I have up here in a frame is my Chatelaine. This is Dragonfly Lace Mandala by Chatelaine. And I am using all the called for colors. Um, I did change the fabric to be 32 count Heather Lugana by Picture This Plus. Um, I special ordered this from Picture This Plus back when that was still possible. I, I hope I don't regret putting it on Lugana, 32 count Lugana. Um, because I, I just didn't, I wasn't, um, I wasn't as familiar with how beading works and um how dyeing how the dyeing process can change fabrics and everything and so i'm just really hoping that i don't have a problem when it comes to beading but look how gorgeous this is can you see the sparkles can you see all the sparkles there's no beads in it yet um but this uses a lot of um silk lame um Krynic, I think it's Krynic. And it's very sparkly, very beautiful. I really love this. It's just hard to stitch on because um, I don't have a PDF. Um, I have a paper copy and the symbols are so close, uh, so close together. You know, like, like in the same area um, the designer used, like, the triangle on the upper right-hand side and the triangle on the upper left-hand side. And, um, you know, just, like, very, very similar symbols. It's just really, it's really tricky to work on. So I just need to, like, I just need to have some time. But I really love how it's turning out and, and I love my fabric. I love my fabric. Um, all right, this is called Patriotic Angel and it's a Dimensions Petite Gold pattern. 
um, I've decided that I am going to abandon this whip. So I'm actually not going to count it as a whip, but I want to show you because I do want to give it up for adoption if anyone is interested in it. That will be in a future video. So I've got kind of a lot done. Um, you can see I have kind of a lot done. Um, but I just, you know, my tastes have changed. Um, I just don't have an interest in stitching this anymore. I just don't. So I want it to go to somebody who, um, who would enjoy it and, and that's it. So if, if that's interesting to you, then make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can find out when I, when I give that away for adoption. If anybody even wants it. I mean, I'm sure somebody will, but... Alright. Next is... Okay. I don't have a picture of this one. I'll come back to it. Alright. This is... Drawn Thread, Marriage of Minds. Now, I started this one um, a couple years ago thinking that I would have it done by my 20th wedding anniversary, which um, it's, I've only got, what, three years, I think, for that to, for that to be doable, but I really don't think that's gonna be something that I can do. I have, I started this on 32 count, okay, this is on 32 count aerial, took me a while to remember that, and I started at the bottom, and this is all that I have. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Oh, um, I don't know why I started at the bottom. I really, I don't know why I did that. Um, I should have started at the top and gone down because these words, um, they're customizable. This is a wedding sampler. And um, so you're supposed to put your name, your spouse's name, um, and the two anniversary, like the the original anniversary, the, okay, my words are failing me. The original wedding date and the anniversary date that you're celebrating um and then however many years so i have to chart those words and i also was thinking about doing like something else like i haven't really decided what to chart there so i don't know how much space i need between this band and this band so I kind of put myself in not a great position to really work hard on this one. And yeah, I don't know. I also, um, I also chose my own flosses and um, I don't know. We'll just see, we'll just see how long this takes. Next one is called Missing Persons File number 1018 by Amy Mitten. This is a mystery sampler, um, sort of a mystery sampler. Um, Amy Mitten does classes and I did not take a class with her, but on her website, she sells these mystery um, samplers where she writes a murder mystery and she has a sampler design that goes along with it and so it's um just a really fun idea and i just love this design i absolutely love it because it has a dark secret and it looks like it just a regular gorgeous sampler but then like if you if you get close and you and you look at it, you find a dark secret. And I think that is genius and I love it so much. So I usually work on this in October because of the dark secret. And 
Um, I just, I really, I need to get back to it. I'm working at the top here and you see there's a lot of um, specialty stitches. This is where I learned how to do double running and it also has like Montenegrin stitch. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it has a whole bunch of specialty stitches and her chart is very, very good, very easy to read. Um, I opted to swap out the linen. I'm stitching this on 28 count Star Sapphire by Witchelt. It's very see-through, but that's okay. Um, so she she has you do she has you do things in sections. Um, she has you focus on individual things in sections, and you do the um, like in this section. I'm supposed to do all the double running before I go and put in the flowers. So I. I think I did that for the most part. Um, I made a lot of counting errors in here uh, while I, I went through a phase in grad school where I would just sit and do this while I was supposed to be listening to something else. And um, I just made so many errors. So I had to put it away for a while. I did take it out again recently and um, just kind of knocked out some of the stuff. And I think it's been really good. So this is really fun too. Look at this gate. Um, believe it or not, these bricks are stitched with the same color floss. But some of the some of the bricks are stitched with a cross stitch, and some of the bricks are stitched with those a plus sign. So it gives you texture, and I think that is genius. I am just really, I love this design so much. Like I said, um, you can only buy kits on her website and that she doesn't have a distributor. So that's the only place that you can get this. Um, I'll link it below. And I think they're worth every penny. They come with hand dyed silks um, on cards, floss cards, um, a fabulous chart, um, like it's a book uh, and I mean when I mean book I mean there's three chapters and um, each section I'll hold it back but each section you can see has like very very detailed instructions about each type of stitch that's incorporated so cannot recommend Amy Mitten enough I love her stuff So this next one, I don't have a cover photo um, because I don't think there was one. Um, so I got this from Etsy and um, the company is called Cacti Cross Stitch. Um, she's no longer on Etsy because she is a Russian designer and issues. Um, but this one is called Saguaro and Pollinators and it's two signs. I'll hold it back so you can kind of see. Um, these are bats and this is cacti flowers and this is the top part of the design. So bees, um, more bats pollinating, um, cacti blooms, um, birds, and yeah, I, I love this design. Love the sampler because I love bats. Bats are like one of my favorite animals. So I am stitching this on, I think it's called Witch's Brew by X2 Designs. Um, it's either 36 or 32 count. And um, this is my progress. Wait a second. <laughs> okay, there we go. So this is my progress so far. You can see I have a tiny little bat there. And um, I think it'll look, I think it'll look pretty good once it's done. Um, right now, I just, um, I don't know. I was stitching on it a while for a long time and then I just, kind of lost 
lost interest in the repetitiveness, but now I might not mind so much. I did, um, I did choose my own flosses um, to be more, I don't know, I just thought they looked a little bit more bat-like, and I don't mind that it blends into the fabric a lot because I used to live in the desert. Um, I used to live in um, Vegas for a year, and we used to go out bat watching at night, and you really can't, like, they're really hard to see against the, against the landscape because they just kind of blend in, but I don't know. I think that's maybe what was kind of stalling me, though, was not being able to see it on the fabric, but I think, I mean, I think I'm okay with it. I just have to, I just have to persevere and just do it. All right, this one is called B Sampler by Leela's Studio. I love this design. Um, I don't know why this is still a whip. Um, I'm stitching this on 32 count white chocolate linen that I coffee stained. Um, I'm using the called for flosses. Um, all of, so the, um, the pattern and the flosses were gifted to me by a stitcher friend. And I, I don't know why. This is still a whip, but it is. I haven't worked on it a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. Anyway, this should not be a whip. It should not take that long. I don't know what is the hold up here. But it's beautiful. I just need to get back to it. All right, here's another whip that shouldn't be a whip anymore, but it is. Um, Easter Rabbit by Ellen Maurer Stroll. It's so pretty. I love that little Easter Rabbit and the purple flowers, and the daffodils, and the purple ribbon. I just love it. I love it. Um, I think the problem is like, I wait for Easter to do this, and that's April. And the last two years of grad school have just been like, <sighs> I'm trying to find the right way up here. So um, I'm actually stitching this one, no, no, two over one half stitch on 28 count. This is a fabric, um, it's a Lugana fabric by, hand dyed by Rolanda. Um, this was a gift, another gift from a stitchy friend. The fabric was, and, um, and I thought this was a good design to put on it. It was just kind of small, but you can see it'll be good. Um, I know, I do know that um, the last time I pulled this out to work on it, um, I didn't have most of the flosses. So instead of working on it, I made a list of the flosses I needed and I went shopping. And that was my stitching time. I do remember that. So we'll see. Hopefully, um, hopefully this coming year, um, I'll have like Easter, Easter stitching time. That would be really great because I have another, um, thing that you'll see that I want to restart on Easter. So this is called the MLK Sampler by Stone Street Stitchworks. Um, She designed this in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Um, the verse says, the time is always right to do what is right. And I really like, I, I love the sentiment. Um, I remember when she designed this, it was during the pandemic, during the lockdown 2020, um, there were all those riots um, 
Black Lives Matter movement, um, you know, a lot of really emotional, high emotional things. And I just thought this was so sweet. Um, just a really great thing. And so I, um, I opted to put this on 32 count Moon Glow fabric by Picture This Plus. It's very bright. And I also picked like super bright um, glosses. Um, so primary colors plus green. And I just kind of see this as, you know, maybe something I can put in my son's room. Um, I didn't get super far, but um, but I, I, I like this one. I've got to get back to it. It should, it should be relatively easy to just like stitch up. I just, I just haven't given it the time it deserves. Okay. Um, this one, I started this for Stitch Mania, I think in 2018. Um, and it was a lot more stitching than I expected. And um, I love it. It's called, um, okay, it's French. Uh, Bigoden Rouge, I think, by Nimue. Um, she's so cool. She's so cool. I love her. I chose an amazing fabric. It's 32, I think it's 32 count, um, Swamp Linen by Picture This Plus. And all I have is part of her neck. <laughs> That's it. I have not, <clears throat> I have not worked on her. I mean, I I think partly it's that I don't really have an emotional connection to this stitch. Um, so I don't want to abandon it, but um, I just, I haven't, haven't felt the need to work on it. Also, the pattern is like one of those enormous fold out, like big sheets of paper. It's like this big and um, just, I need to, I, I love this and I'm going to get back to it eventually. I just don't know when, and it's just going to be a whip that comes out every now and then. All right. Next is a Panna kit that I got from the Panna website, like in 2018. Um, and it's it's not there anymore, so I'm sorry. I know this is something that a lot of people like, but it's I call it African Fisherman. I do believe that is actually the title, but it's um, I forget what the tribe is called, uh, what the name is, what the name is of the tribe, um, but it's a it's a certain Maasai. Is it called Maasai? Um, Anyway, um, I love these panna kits. Um, I did sub out the fabric for 16 count sang sanguine, no, 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 serene. 16 count serene Ada by Picture This Plus. It's a very, very light mint green. And here is the progress that I have. Um, I don't have, a lot of progress on it. Um, I just started in the middle. You can see. So I've got most of the boat there and I'm working on the first fisherman's um, garb. I love the bright colors. I love cultural stuff. So this is great. This one is just easy to to pick up and just stitch on. So I mean I could probably see this being a travel 
a travel um, stitch for me at some point. Um, my trouble is I always, um, I always find like gift stitching or like event stitching and that's what becomes my, um, my travel pieces and And then stuff like this just suffers neglect. Next, this one. I I feel bad about this one. I don't know what to do about this one. Violet's Blue by Blackbird Designs. Um, this is what it will look like. So, um... I started stitching this. It's a mystery linen, um, but I think it's 32 count. And um, I started stitching this with all of the called for colors. I just thought that's it. I just want whatever that picture looks like, I want it to look like that. But it just is too antique for me. So I actually had more of this stitched. I had more stitched than this. I had like all of the, I had a big vine here, I had all the um, grass, and it just is, um, it's too antique -y. it's just too antique, and I just didn't like it every time I pulled it out, and I still don't really love this, the house, the way it looks, it just looks very, um, just very antiqued. Um, and also the purples are not super purple, they do look they they look a lot more purple in the picture, um, so I think I'm also gonna take out all of that and then I don't know. Um, so I do have um, I actually do have three purples here um, that my friend Amy gifted me and they're um, they're Weeks Dye Works and I think I might just try to restitch the um, the violets with these with these purples um, I think I'll feel better doing that um, purple's my favorite color so she didn't know that I, <laughs> that I had this dilemma with the violets blue but when I saw these together I was like oh maybe that'll work but I haven't I just haven't built up the courage to keep stitching on this one, you know, like after I ripped out so much and I just, it was so much work undone and I thought about chopping off half the pattern and like redesigning and whatever else, but I think I just need to, I don't know, I think I just need to go for it. So tell me what you think. This is technically a whip and I technically haven't abandoned it yet because I just can't abandon it. Plus this fabric is so pretty. What a pretty neutral. Like I got this, um, it was, it was actually from Victoria Motto Sampler Shop. So I do know it's, you know, hand dyed um, by her, but I don't know what the color is. Anyway. Okay, last one in this pile is called Quaker Blues by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. That's what it looks like. Um, this is on 32 count vintage Stormy Night Lugana. And I decided to do this one over one on 32 count Lugana. And um, with a with a Veldani floss, which is a uh, rich brick, and that's how far I got. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this, honestly. I think I might just not finish it. It just wasn't, it wasn't enjoyable, and I haven't picked it up since I started it, and I might have started it in like 2018, and I don't know. So this is how you get like over 60 whips, people. Like you, 
you start projects and you run into problems and you're like, I don't want to abandon it, but I kind of do, but I don't. And then here we are. So, okay. I've shown you everything in my um, vicinity here. I'm going to pause and decide if I want to keep going today or if I want to pick this up tomorrow because I'm losing sunlight and and I'm tired. It feels like we've been filming for like 17 hours. <laughs> There's more. Okay. BRB. Okay. I did decide to persevere for now at least, but I probably will have to pause, recharge my camera. All right, this is the whip I had to skip initially because I didn't have the cover photo. Here's, I call her Purple Geisha. She's by Joan Elliott. Technically, she's called Oriental. Oriental Lady Beauty, which she's not. She's Purple Geisha. Uh, this is a gift. It's in this book, um, Oriental Odyssey, which was gifted to me um, by Stitcher Friend. And um, I am doing this on 36 count. Midnight Linen by Luminous Fiber Arts. Um, I have not seen um, Misty Purcell. Um, Misty Purcell is Luminous Fiber Arts, and um, I have not seen her dye this color in a, in quite a while. So I don't know that you can still get this, but if um, she kind of does on demand, I think, and and if if she knew that there was a demand for this, maybe she would do it, but. I don't know. I love it. It's a little bit hard to stitch on. Just me personally, it's my eyes. Um, they don't like, they just don't like dark fabrics, I'm learning. Um, what I do need to do is use one of my ball tip needles um, next time I pull this out and work on it and see if that helps. But I'm gonna be leaving... Um, the model has like a light blue background against the um, wisteria. I'm gonna leave it open so it's just dark. Um, and I'm stitching this for my youngest sister and we were just talking about how I planned to stitch this this year. Like I planned to stitch on it um, at least 10 times this year and I have stitched on it zero. So, um, she reminded me that I was still stitching this for her and I was like, no, I'm sorry. It's going to take a long time. It's a huge project and grad school just kind of derailed all my plans and, you know, everything. She said she was going to wait. So I love how the purple is looking on this amazing fabric. I love this fabric. Um... I do need to like not keep folding it that way though because I'm getting some pretty severe creases so I'm gonna fix that. All right next um this is called Anne McFarlane Sampler um 1827 by Wishing Thorn. um this is on Etsy I think um, Kitten Stitcher just started carrying the Wishing Thorn designs. Um, I know she got the designer, um, uh, has got a little bit more recognition now. Um, she has a lot of other reproduction samplers. Um, and so I know that she's, you know, they've got got some good stuff. Okay, I just did a quick start on this so that I could tell where the middle was. I'm doing this on 40 count gossamer linen by Pictures Plus. And it's this really pretty, 
almost neon <laughs> green and yellow color. Um, it looks a little blotchy in the video, but it's not quite as blotchy in real life. And the green that I'm using is 890. So, let's show you where I am. And I totally messed up already. I, I frequently make mistakes when I start projects, which is why I don't really like starting projects. Um, but this is supposed to be an ampersand, and it's supposed to not have um, a stitch in the middle. But these are eyelets. I don't know if you can see that. These are eyelets. And when I realized that I had made a mistake, I was like, okay, do I want to take out like seven eyelets? The answer was no. So I just am going to leave it. Anyway, I think this is a super fun design, um, like super fun, and it's a reproduction. Um, I just think those, like the, the village on either side, it's just so cool. I bought it the moment I saw it. I think I started this, it was during grad school, I think, at some point. This one's called Autumn Knotting by Tempting Tangles. And I started this with my friend Christina. Um, she completed the whole first page um, and I'm, I'm still working on mine. Um, here's mine. I. I think I, um, I decided to stitch the sky with only one strand, but there's a blended floss in there, so I'm going to have to um, figure out which one to use. I know Christina, um, she's doing it 36 count, one over two, and she found a variegated floss to um, substitute for that um, blended floss. So. I'm just going to have to get what she used because I'm using most of the call for colors. Um, I think there's just a few here and there that I kind of subbed out, but I really like the design um, as is. And so that's my progress so far. Um, this is sorely neglected. I mean, oh man, I really need to get back to this. This is um, Antique White Lugana, 32 count. So here's a project I have to decide what to do about, and I think I know the answer, but I just have to do it. Um, this is a gold collection petite called the Noel Ornament. Um, I think these are so pretty. I, I stitched one of these already. Um, I can't remember which one it was. It was red. I think, I think it was a cardinal. No, maybe a chickadee with red background. Anyway. Um, so I stitched the first one in 2016 and then I picked up this one immediately after and then I got this far and I just felt burnt out. I just didn't want to do it anymore and um and I haven't touched this since 2016. So I have a lot done you know now that I have it out and I'm seeing it like I I should just I should just do it. I should just get it done with. Just do it, Leah. Just finish it. Alright. I mean I should just finish this, right? Okay. This one is called The Good Shepherd. It's a um, Lucilla kit. I loved this the moment I saw it. Um, I 
when I first found Floss Tube, um, I learned about parking. This is basically a full coverage design. And um, so when I learned about parking, I was like, oh, well, this would be a perfect one to try. So I got the kit all put together um, and I tried parking. I tried gridding my own fabric with fishing wire. It was not thin enough. Um, it was really bulky, um, the fishing wire, I mean. And this is the, this is not the kit fabric. I think I bought different fabric, but it's like the same count and it's still Lugana, I think. <sighs> anyway, it's 28 count and it's just not working for me. I, I really, it needs to be restarted. So this is my restart plan. I wanna restart this this year let me show you how far I got. Just a mess. Like, this is just a mess. Okay. All right. So this is how far I got. Um, the colors are a lot more bright than the picture. Look at this. Like, that border just... It doesn't, it, sh it doesn't look as like hot yellow and orange as it does in person. So I'm also thinking when I restart it, I might just leave this border off. And I think I will keep the bottom because I might do that. I don't know. I might just like find a different color or uh, maybe just do something different. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'll deal with it later. I'll just do the inside and I'll deal with the border later. I'll just deal with it later. So I know for sure I want to do diagonal stitching with this. Um, it does need an even weave or linen because there are fractional stitches. Yeah, that's the other thing. I put this Velcro, these Velcro strips, because I have this American Dream stand uh, that uses Velcro and it's just not, nothing about this is really working out for me. So I'm just gonna do it, I'm just gonna restart it. So that's on my restart plan. I'm gonna get different fabric I might get fresh DMC because um, these Busilla kits, they use DMC floss, I believe. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna just do it differently. <sighs> okay, so I think I'm gonna take a break um, until tomorrow. So, um, cause I'm losing, I'm losing my light outside and all I have are my, um, ring lights and I think the light is getting a little bit weird. So we'll finish this tomorrow. Okay, it's another day and another year apparently. Um, if you can believe it, I spent most of the day yesterday thinking that New Year's Eve was the next day. Like today, I thought today was gonna be New Year's Eve. Um, it was like around 5 p.m. when I actually realized that New Year's Day is tomorrow, today. So Happy New Year, everyone. Um, you know. Anyway, so I, um, I think I have the rest of my whips here. Um, hopefully I'm not missing any. Um, I don't think I am, but we'll see. I, um, so these whips, I, I brought the stuff from my stitching spot downstairs. Um, and I also, <clears throat> I have a whole shelf of, um, whips and project bags that I just kind of threw into a laundry basket and I'll just show you those 
as we go. Um, yesterday I was using a chair, this chair next to me for, for my baskets, but I have a feeling that Dudley's going to want to um, sit there, so speaking of which. Alright, I thought I could help him get settled, but he's, he's being himself. Alright, so um, like I said, I picked up some projects from my stitching spot downstairs and I'll show those to you now. Um, this is Peace on Earth Sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. There we go. Um, it's super pretty. And the text here is, um, it's the lyrics from I Heard Bells on Christmas Day. And the verse, so this verse is over one, but everything else is full cross. So. Um, this has been my favorite thing to stitch um, at night. Like, I just, I've been stitching on it exclusively at night, um, and it's just been really therapeutic, and I've been really enjoying it. So I keep it in an 11 by 17 Q-snap, and here is where I am. Um, if you want to see the full the full bottom half, um, just check out my last video. But I'm just, I'm not going to take this part off today, sorry. Um, since you saw it last, I added more to this line. Um, I added more to this motif, and I'm bringing the border up and around. So, um, yeah. I think I should see a finish on this, like, relatively soon, but there is a lot of stitching. Um, this is... This is a bigger project than it appears. Um, <clears throat> it's 219 by 270. So, I mean, that's large, I think. It, my, by my standards, it's large. Um, so, anyway, I'm really enjoying it. And, let's see if I can... Something behind it there. Um, next one. I don't have a cover photo for this, um, but it's called Bargello Sampler. Um, when I finished grad school, I told myself that I was going to spend the summer learning new new stitching. So. Um, really, I wanted to learn Hardanger, um, and I was going to teach myself Hardanger this year. That didn't happen. Um, but I was going to kind of ease into it. Um, I found I found a Hardanger sampler on Etsy um, by Mary. Um, Hickmott, I think is what the name is. I'll put the link to the shop below. Um, Anyway, in that same shop, um, I saw this Bargello sampler, and this is also another type of embroidery that I've always wanted to do because um, because my great grandma had a foot rest that um, I think and a chair, if I remember correctly, um, that was this style of stitching, and I I always admired it, and I always wanted to do it, so. Um, now I know it's called the Bargello stitch. And um, so here's a picture of the chart. And I've picked my own um, colors. I wanted it to be purple. So the whole thing is gonna be purple. I thought um, I, thought I could just do one square a week. Um, and I did this in a day, so. Um, yeah, it shouldn't take very long to complete, but I just have to, like, schedule time to do that. So, I mean, I might just look at my year ahead and try to fit at least one of these squares in every month. I think that would be kind of fun. But look at, look at how pretty that is. Okay, focus on the stitching. 
So, anyway, yeah. I just picked a whole bunch of purples. The darkest purple is actually a dark blue, but <clears throat> it goes really well with these purples. So, it's because it's like a purpley blue. Um, if you need... If you need these colors, then um, just leave me a comment down below. Um, <clears throat> the last thing in my stitching spot um, was a new start after grad school. Um, this was a gift from a friend um, at StitchCon, actually, and um, I wanted to start this um, this summer. This is called Wilbur by Tracy Coget. I love this little pig. So I I started this back in May. Um, it's on 36 count fossil linen. Um, I did not get very far. So this is all I have. <clears throat> Um, okay, so there's a couple things that I need to think about. Um, the chart is difficult for me to read. The symbols are too similar to one another, so, like, it requires a whole lot of focus and attention to what symbols are being used. Um, because there's, like, an S and a B and a C and, um you know, all clustered in one area and all those curvy shapes, like it's just really hard to distinguish between the symbols. So um, I either have to like make a working copy and highlight or um, I actually considered putting this into um, a software that I have um, and like charting it in a digital file. I don't really know. Um, I need to figure something out because I really like it. And the other thing that I was struggling with is just how dark the fabric is that I chose. But I wanted to be this dark, so um, we'll have to figure something out. So that's either that's either going to be a restart or continue, but some kind of different method. Okay, um, I almost forgot this one. This is Faith, Hope, Peace, Love by Teresa Kogut. Um, this is my on again, off again travel project. Um, I'm doing this as an anniversary, an anniversary stitch. Um, for, for, um, my husband and I's wedding anniversary. I think I'm gonna do it for my 20th, um, if I can. Um, I think I'm just gonna go with my original plan to remove this middle band um, and just kind of put these together um, because I think it'll go faster. <laughs> I think it'll go faster that way. I'm stitching this on 16 count um, Icon Ada by Picture This Plus, and I'm doing a color, like a, just a color conversion, I guess. Um, keeping with a lot of the spirit of the design, but um, changing quite a bit too. Um, the pattern calls for like two colors of green, but I've added multiple. I think I'm using five or six different greens. Um, Last I worked on it, um, I think I added all those animals at the bottom. And I also found the edge here. So I would know, um, so I would know where the edges are. So now this is as wide as it will ever get. And so yeah, I, I most recently worked in this area but I like how it's coming out. This is really very fun. I love it.
Okay, so um, this is something that I was originally not going to show on my video because it's a gift for somebody. I want it to be a surprise. I don't think this person um, will watch this video. At least I don't think they will watch it all the way through. So if I kind of bury this in the middle, it can stay a secret. Um, and if not, then whatever. Um, it is what it is. Um, okay, so this is a gift that I'm stitching for a friend. Um, a very good friend. And um, it's called Free and Brave. This is by the Drawn Thread. That's what the pattern looks like. Um, I am going to stitch this person's name at the bottom and their service date. Um, this is somebody that I worked with and um, I know they're really going to like this. So, um, This is almost done. Like I, I just have one flower to stitch and and the name of the person at the bottom. Um, I'm stitching this on 32 count Whisper um, by Zweigart. And oh, let me show you where I am. I used my own floss colors um but look at that so all i have left to do is this red flower up here and then i'm going to add a name down here and then i just have to frame it and gift it and it's just a because gift um we we see this person on a regular basis and uh, we used to work together and um i mean i just I think I, I'm just really excited to gift this. So um, I'm showing this to you. Hopefully it stays a secret. If not, this person is um, notoriously good at um, games and figuring things out. And so good on you if you found it. I love Drawn Thread. They're Probably my favorite designer but all right okay the next one is this is actually the last one I keep in a Q-snap um, it's called hearth and home by Chessie and me this is what the model looks like um, I am gonna be changing these words to say come Lord Jesus be our guest um, and then I have a companion piece picked out um, which I showed in a previous update video. So this is stitched, this is stitched on um, 32 count vintage Luna linen by Lakeside Linens. This is like an amazing fabric. I love, I absolutely love this fabric. I'm not like, a huge yellow person but it's so it's so warm it's such a warm yellow I just really love it it's got just a little hint of orange in it so anyway this is where I am um, <clears throat> there's lots of specialty stitches not lots I should say there's like satin stitches and there's over one stitching um, I don't know if there's other, um, the roof was really tricky to follow. Um, like the chart was really tricky to follow all the, um, uneven stat satin stitching. Um, so I think I actually messed up here, but I'm just going to go with it. Um, I'm using some of the called for and some of my own choices. So next, 
Next is Jumpin' Jack Frost by Tempting Tangles. Very cute. Um, so I, um, I started this back when I was just starting to um, substitute flosses and stuff. Um, I substituted a large number of these flosses. Um, I don't know that I would have done that now um, on this side of things. Um, I might have just like, I might have just stuck with what she's got here because it's, um, here's my progress. <clears throat> so um, it turned out okay, you know, with my substitutions, but I don't know that it's like um, better or worse than than what's what it's charted for. Um, I know I did. So I liked um, I I liked on the picture that Jack Frost's jacket looks kind of purple, and the flosses used don't look very purple. They look more red, and um, so I did substitute um, some purple DMCs for the jacket. Um, and I was supposed to work on this one for 10, 10 days in 2022, but that just didn't happen. I think I worked on it one or two days, that's it. But it's just for fun, um, just because I like it, and it comes out in the fall, usually. Um, what am I stitching this on? 28 count time. Jobelin. It's a very, 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 very soft, loose fabric. Um, but I love the color. You can see the hole. I had to buy a whole um, quarter, that quarter, and I just love... It's pretty accurate. The color representation is pretty accurate, so... And I have got... Um, I did actually get time, this is time, like the herb. I did get time in linen, and it's it's not it's not nearly like this beautiful. Like you can't see the um, variegation as much in the linen because it's like so see-through. Um, and it's, it just doesn't pick it up as much, but that's just an FYI if you're looking for fabric options. Um, this is, it's really pretty, but it frays really easily. I don't know if you've never used Jobelin, like it frays really, really easily. So you need like, you need a larger margin for your stitching if you're gonna like sew it into anything just because like this, the, the weave is just so loose. Next is a whip that I haven't touched in a long time. Um, <clears throat> it's called Winter Wisdom by Cottage Garden Samplings. Um, this was my favorite of this whole series. Um, so I started with this one. I'm definitely not going to do all of them. I, I love to see them and I love to see people working on them, but um, I just don't think that I would do all of them. I couldn't see myself doing that. Um, I did get two others that I, um, these are my, so these are my top three favorites. And um, this one is Courage, my second favorite. And Merry and Bright. <clears throat> so I I think I'll try to do all, um, all three of these. On this piece of fabric. This is 32 count farm eggs by X2 Designs. And this is my progress. So um, originally I thought I might do like six to eight of these um, these bird designs like this this series and so I was thinking I would put it all on this one piece of fabric. 
And because of that, I kind of like spaced out visually where I want them according to like where these spots are and I thought it would look the best. And this one just happens to be like super, super close to the edge. Like here's the fabric margin right there. And the stitching is gonna end like here, I, literally maybe an inch of margin for myself. So I don't know, it's a little bit silly of me, but I don't think I wanna restart. I did um, I did have to substitute some flosses because I started this in 2020 when, you know, life was crazy. And so I just took some from my stash that looked similar to these colors. And um, and I, I like the way they look, um, but yeah, I don't know. This is one that just doesn't ever call to me, so I don't know if it's just not... No, I'm not really sure. I also don't, I don't love the way the white looks on this fabric. You can see the snow there. It's not, it doesn't, it just doesn't show up very well. So I don't know. I don't know. This is just in my whip pile for now. All right, this one is Modern Folk Embroidery Stitch Along 2020, um, a family patchwork sampler. This is what it will look like. Um, <clears throat> my thought on, on this was that I was going to do all of the borders in Soot by Gentle Art. And so that's all I've done on this so far is just the borders, um, just the borders. And then inside of each one, I was going to make it um, different colors. And so I, I might still do that, um, but honestly, this one, I'm just kind of stalled out on this one for some reason. Um, oh, that's where my... This is one of my favorite needle minders. I didn't, didn't remember that it was on here. Okay, so um, so this is what I have so far. Um, like I said, this is Soot by Gentle Arts. And I love the variegation. It's subtle, but it's pretty. And, and this is just a really pretty design too. Um, someone mentioned that the whole thing would look good in Soot by Gentle Arts, but I don't know that I can really I don't know that I could do that. Um, so this is 25 count, one over one, um, full cross. There's a lot of stitching in these borders, like a lot of stitching. So, um, I don't know. I really like the motifs inside of each section, so. It's just going to take some time for me to feel like I want to work on this, but um, I like it. You know, I just don't, I don't have any significance attached to it. So we'll see. It's a whip for now. This one is called The Modestly Sized Red Ship of Life by Ink Circles. This was a market release, um, maybe 2019 market release. Um, it was in my top three favorites of that year. And I still love it. <clears throat> I still love it so much. Um, every now and then I think, oh, I need to get that out and work on it. And then, you know, other things take priority. But um, I do still, I do really love it. And I'm not doing it in red. Um, I'm doing it in earth colors. So <clears throat> these bands, these bands that are different colors, I'm actually stitching those in like a white and gray hand dyed silk. Um, <clears throat> and then all of the animals, um, all of the animals and plants and basically flora and fauna, I'll be doing in a blue green um, 
hand dyed silk. Um, all these lines, the borders and anything, um, yeah, all the, all the borders and probably these tassels, maybe these tassels, um, we'll be doing, I'll be doing them in like a dark blue watery, um, silk. <clears throat> and then everything man-made, so like this whole ship and the spears and the flags and stuff, um, I have that in a like blue tan green it's it's actually a floss called bluegrass i think bluegrass by gloriana so you see it's got like a brown and golds in mixed in with the blues and greens so um so my thought is that on this this is like a, this is moss. This is 25 count moss um, Lugana. And I'm stitching one over one. This is how far I got. But you see, I've got all the flosses on there now and I can't tell, is it blurry? Okay. Um, so I've got all the, all the floss choices on there now and it's looking pretty good, I think. All those little ocean creatures are really fun. There's a lot of repetitive stitching, um, you know, in the borders, and I don't love that, you know, but it's it's good for chatting with somebody, you know, you're just chatting and filling in the monotonous. And for some reason, I decided to do stripey on, on there, and I don't know that I really like that either, but whatever. We're just going to go with it. So, like I said, every now and then this, this does call to me, but I don't, I just don't ever prioritize it. So it hasn't come out in a while. Um, this one is a little turtle. It's from a magazine. Um, I made a working copy, but the magazine is just cross stitch January, February, 95. So this is what the magazine looks like. And this is what my little turtle looks like. I haven't got very far in this. Um, I'm using Heather. No, 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 not Heather. Um, shoot. Um, so I think it starts with an H. Um, Highland, 32 count Highland Lugana by Pictureless Plus. And this is how far I got. <laughs> Not very far at all. I think this is maybe one day of stitching. Um, the The, the pattern um, is full of blends, like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 just on one page of, I mean, there's, there's so much floss. I mean, so much floss. This much floss for that tiny little pattern. And um, so anyway, um, I started it during grad school, um, I think maybe in 2020, and I just haven't had the the mental um, capacity to work on this. But I I do I do think about this sometimes. I'm like, oh, I really want to get to that. Um, so we'll see when this comes out next. All right, this is called. Spring Cat Sampler by Cooler Classic. Um, I I originally bought the hard copy for this, but um, then they offered it as a PDF, and the PDF works on um, Pattern Keeper, so so I bought the digital copy um, because 
I like to use Pattern Keeper. And for this kind of design, it really, really, really makes a huge difference because there's a lot of confetti in there. Um, so, um, I started down here with the cat and kind of made some initial stitches in the sides here. And the, now I think the last time I worked on this, I worked up here on the on the bird feeder. Yes, kitty, come here. Come here. Come here. There's a chair for you right here. Come here. Duffy. Okay, I'm stitching this on 16 count Ariel by Picture This Plus, Ada. It's an Ada. And I'll be stitching, I my plan is to stitch all four. Um, my plan is to stitch all four and um, the spring and summer will be stitched on this Ariel Ada and then the fall and winter will be stitched on a grayer Ada. Um, but that's my plan anyway. So here is my progress on this one. I like how it looks on this fabric. I think they'll be so pretty together. So. Who was I just watching that said this should be a yoga pose? Totally. Can't remember who I was just watching. Wow. Kitty, come here. Come here. Come sit with me. This one, this one is called Suffrage Act by Little House Needleworks. Um, I started this in 2020. I thought it would be nice to do um, as a 20th anniversary of um, the Suffrage Act. Um, it's a lot more stitching in here than meets the eye. Uh, this is a 129 by 85. It sounds like not very much stitching, but I mean, there these words, these words up here, they're very dense stitching. Very dense. I'm stitching this on. Um, what is this? Vintage Whisper, Vintage Stormy Night. Vintage Stormy, Stormy Night Lugana by Zweigart. And I think I'm using some called for floss and some of my own choosing. So this is my, this is where I am. Every now, every now and then I take this out. Um, I think I took it out on voting days. Um, I think I also tried to take it out the 4th of July. Um, so yeah, just chipping away at it here and there. Um, it'll be nice to have this done. Um, this is called, um, I don't remember what it's called. It's an L Forest embroidery kit. Um, I call it the Clover Sampler because it's clover. Um, it might be called Duke, Duke Shamrock, mm, but I just call it the Clover Sampler. This is um, over halfway done and it's really super fun to stitch. I love this. Um, I love this project. I am using all the called for, I'm, it's a kit, so I'm using all of the kit materials, except for, um, I decided to sub out, um, this color floss, because the kit 
um, was just way too light. The kit, the kit color, the floss that came with it um, just ended up being way too light. So I opted for Dublin Bay by Classic Colorworks. And it's like the perfect shamrock color, I think. So. So this is, um, this is over halfway done. Um, this is, this is the halfway mark here. So you can see I've got this much um, completed over half. Um, I guess I am missing a couple key motifs. Like there's little keys that I'm missing here um, and around here. Um, well, that's over halfway. Anyway, um, oh, here. That's where it was. Here and here. Um, I'm missing some key motifs, but um, I think I could maybe finish this this year. So this is going to be kind of a bonus if I can finish this. I would like to finish it in 2023. It's just super pretty. Just so pretty. <laughs> so pretty. Look at that. The reason I didn't finish those keys is because it's a metallic floss. Um, and the fabric is, you know, I don't have a lot of margin on this kit fabric, like an inch. So um, putting the hoop over metallic floss is not great. Um, so I just decided I'll probably do those all last. And um, if you do, if you do this, pattern and you do opt to get the Dublin Bay by Classic Colorworks, you need more than one skein. Okay, this is Words to Live by Love by Heartstring Samplery. And I adopted this whip from my friend Amy Loves Totes. And um, um, I, I did one of the others in the series. Um, I showed that in my last video actually because I fully finished it. I put it in a frame. So here's my progress. Um, not much since I got it from Amy. Um, I think Amy stitched like all of this and I might have only added a row and a half. Um, I might have even completed that row. I don't. I don't remember. Um, I haven't stitched a whole lot on this, but this will be a um, a finish goal for 2023 because I actually have a friend who wants this, um, and like she 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 asked me for it. She saw me working on it. She goes, "Oh my gosh, can I have that?" And I was like, "Okay, you know, um, when somebody wants your stitching." Um, you just, it makes you feel good. And, um, and so I was like, yeah, you can, you know, I'll, I'll stitch this for you. And then every time, not every time, but often when I see her, she asks me about it. Like she really, really loved it so much. And so, um, this will be a finish goal for 2023. Um, it's 40 count fog linen, one over two the floss the floss i'm using is color and cotton winter sea and um it's an older one she she has the dye lot on it so i'm hoping this will be enough it should be enough um but we'll deal that we'll deal with that when it when it gets there so this is a really cool whip um and I need to work on this more. It's called Excursion Number no. 9 Guatemala by Amy Mitten. And this is another one of her kits from her website. This is um what makes it so cool is that 
you actually have to weave your own colored threads into the linen. So these stripes here in the linen, it doesn't come that way. You have to make it. So that's what my progress has been so far on this project. And I really don't, I don't take it out more than once or twice a year. And um, this takes longer than you might think. So this is as far as I am. And I can't wait to get stitching. Um, the stitching on it is not cross, it's not cross stitching. It's, um, it's different. And I, I can't tell you right at the moment, um, I can't tell you at the moment what the stitches is, uh, what stitches are called because I, I don't know. Um, but when I pull this back out and, and everything, I can give you more information. Or you can look on her website, which is going to be linked below. So that's, it's really cool. Um, she, she, her instructions are excellent. And she, this is the, um, these are the fibers that came with the kit. And, um, some of these are linen threads. So like this one is a linen thread. This one is something else. Um, they're thicker. I think they are cotton. I think it's a pearl cotton. So this, this whole design is done in a pearl cotton, um, because it just is like, can you, can you see? It's not exits. Look at this. So funny. Look at this person. I just love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. So this is a project that brings me joy and I really just need to do it more often and get this, um, get the, get the linen set up so I can start stitching and that'll be fun. The other cool thing about these passport, uh, I mean, these um, excursions, she has a whole series of um, around the world designs. And with the first one that you buy, you get a passport and um, she gives you, um, she gives you um, a little, the, in, the first page has your name on it. And, um, the design company, your passport number, um, like your, your, this passport number, um, date of issue, uh, it's so fun. And then, um, each, each design, so this is number nine, and I must not have put the, I haven't put my sticker in there yet, but, um, she gives you a sticker for whatever, whatever one you do. So I think this is just really, it's just really fun and like if you're going to collect them all um which i would love to do but i don't know that i i will do that um it's just fun so she's totally fun she's got great ideas such a genius uh needle worker this is folk santa by x's and o's um this is my first major color conversion. Um, I am changing all of the yellows to blues, all of the oranges to purple. So pretty massive color conversion. Uh, I had a goal to work on this 10 times this year. I've worked on it zero. And by this year, I mean 2022, which was technically last year. It's looking really cool. Like <laughs> in every sense of the word. Um Okay, so I'm doing this on 40 count. This is also my first project on 40 count. So lots of firsts in this one. Um This is my prog progress. Um, 40 count, one over two. This All this gingham background 
is charted to be two over two and I'm just doing one over two um, half. No, no, sorry, I said that wrong. It's charted to be full cross and I'm opting to do half stitches um, because it just, you know, why I just, I didn't see a purpose in doing a full cross. Um, it'll take longer doing that. So I just decided to half the time and the effort and the floss and just do half stitches. And I think it looks really good that way. Alternatively, um, if you were to do this design, if you were to find it somewhere, I don't think it's in print anymore, honestly. Um, but if you were to find this somewhere, um, you could just use a gingham fabric. That's what I would have done had I known that gingham fabric was an option. I didn't know enough back then. Um, but it's okay because I, I like I like how it looks now and I just need to I just need to work on it some more. Um, I was excited to see how the the um, apple coat um, turns out and It's looking pretty good. So I don't know if you can hear that scratching, but um, sometimes when I give Dudley wet food, um, he tries to bury it. Um, so he's like, he scratches it. Um, it's next to a curtain. So he'll sit there and scratch at it and try to try to bury his food. I don't know if that's, an indication that it smells nasty or that it's his favorite thing or I don't really know but it's just funny when he does it. Yeah Kitty I'm talking about you. Yes I am. All right. Okay now we're getting into <clears throat> oldest whips and we're almost done. Yes Kitty. Sit up here. Sit up here. Right here. Wow. Come on. Right here. Wow. Come here. So, um, first, let me show you my only heaven and earth design that I've actually started. Um, stitched one over one. Full cross on 25 count easy grid. Um, I don't have a picture with me. I'll have to insert a picture here. And this is how far I got before I called it quits. So, um, when I first started watching Floss Tube, um, I was watching um, Sarah Stitching Mommy and Ann P, which um, she goes by Fiber Floss and Fiction now. Um, and both of them were super into full coverage and so I was super inspired to try it myself. And um, I love the look of full coverage um, when it's all done and everything. Um, I do have some I do have some other Heaven and Earth projects that I want to start. Um, this one, I I just, I was super ambitious and I, I just got burned out on the amount of stitches that I thought I had to do. So um, I might get back to this someday. Um, not anytime soon, but um, we've got her face coming in here and her crown. And um, this is the waterfall. I was super excited to, um, to stitch that. And this is gonna be all landscape. So, um, and this is the, the sky and the, the cloud. It's hard to hold up here for you to see. So, um, I think the reason I did that is I was trying to do like page starts. Um, I think some kind of challenge, some, something I was doing page starts, but that's why it's all kind of all over the board. I think now, um, I'm just going to do, um, diagonal 
diagonal stitching because that really works for me. And I also, I don't think starting in the top left corner is right for me um, because of the way I stitch. So I don't think I won't be doing that again, but I, I think I will pick this up at some point. I just don't know when I'll, when I'll be inspired to do so. Okay, this is a dimensions kit called Cream for Kitty. It's it's out of print. I haven't seen it really online, so you can you can um, you can always look on eBay. So um, this is my until recently this was my second oldest whip. Um, I'm using all the kit materials and it's it came with 14 count Ada and you can see in the picture like you can see how sparse the stitching is um I mean I think that was just pretty standard for the times um but since I've started floss tube or watching floss tube I should say and getting um getting a stitching advice from, you know, experienced stitchers. I see a lot of mistakes in this and um, I also don't care for the coverage. So um, I am still going to stitch the rest of it. Um, I am still going to complete this because it's a, it's a testament, um, a testimony, I guess, to my stitching journey you know like this is all um you can see the cat i stitched in different directions um you know so and you can see the ridges um i i've since learned how to avoid ridges in block stitching um there's no back stitching done yet i have to fill in last time i worked on this i only worked on this one time this year maybe twice um, I wanted to put in a full 10 days, but I didn't get to that. Um, but I just worked here in this area when I stitched on it this year. Um, I do want to, like I said, I do want to finish this. And I think someday I might actually stitch it again, um, but using my own, um, like a different fabric, a smaller count fabric, and possibly... Um, well, my own flosses, DMC or something. Anyway, it's so sweet. It is so sweet. It's definitely, it's up there in my in my finish goals. But um, uh, my my motivation is low compared to other projects. Let's say that. So it usually gets bumped from the priority list. I do want to finish my oldest whips, but <clears throat> not at the expense of gift stitching and and other, you know, meaningful stitches. So um, this this next one was my oldest whip um, until very recently, and I'll get to that later, but this is called Honey Bear, another Dimensions kit. I started this in 2010, yeah, or 2010 or 2011. Um, again, the 14 count fabric. The coverage is not the best in places, but um, it's actually not bad. Excuse me. It's, it's really, it's not bad as far as, um, because the background fabric is brown, so most of the, most of the, um, most of the floss is brown. That was part of my problem, um, my lack of motivation. I just, I realized with this project that I don't, I don't like to stitch with brown or like a lot of brown because I just get... But I have a lot done. Look how much done I have. <laughs> Isn't that, that's a lot, you know? Um, I, I need to finish this. 
it needs to be prioritized at some point. Um, I don't know when. I'll have to think about that. And I know um, Christine um, Calico Whimsy, she also has this and also needs to finish it. So we've talked about doing a stitch along um, to finish to finish this and so we might do that at some point. If any of you have this and it's still not done, <laughs> drop me a comment. Maybe a group of us will try to rally and just finish this sometime. I don't think I'll prioritize this over my Christmas stocking, um, but you never know. I think this would be a good project to do like one length of floss a day and see, you know, like a daily kind of a stitch that would maybe lessen the burnout on it. Um, I really do have a lot um, done on this, but I think there's also a lot more to go. So, okay, so there's that. And the last whip that I have to show you is my very oldest whip. And if you want to know more about this whip, you can watch my uh, floss tube extra um, that I posted a couple videos ago. This is um, a magazine, sort of a magazine um, design. And I think it's, I mean, I don't even know what the, it's just a birth sampler. It's called One World Birth Sampler. I started this when I was like 12. And all I need to do, all I need to do is I need to bring this vine border up here and over and I'm going to call it done. Um, I'm not going to put in all of those flowers that you see on the border. Um, I just can't. I just can't. Um, that's what caused me to stop um, way back, way back when I was, you know, a child. And um, apparently I also stopped mid back stitch. I must have been called out of my bedroom or something to do some kind of chore or errand or something. I don't know. Anyway, this is my very oldest whip. It should be, it should be relatively easy to just um, complete that. And do I have the flosses? I think I do. Um, they're, I don't know that I labeled them. Let me look. No, I don't think I did. Look at this. This is how I kept my DMC. I didn't know any better. Look at that. I didn't put the numbers on the floss, so... Honestly, it looks like 470. So I'll just... I'll color match if I need to, but... Okay, that was a lot. It was a lot. Um, I'm looking around just to make sure I've covered everything. I think I've covered everything. Um, I hope you enjoyed this whip parade. I, I, it, I promised it a long time ago, and I'm sorry that it took so long to deliver, but um, that's just the way life goes sometimes. Um, I thought I would show you just really quick um, what I use to keep track of my stitching and um, I get a new I get a new calendar every single year um, so it's not always this size and it's not always this style. Um, 2022 was the first year that I opted to go for just a monthly um, just a monthly spread and let me show you one with um, stitching on it. This is so this is October's. I just do it retroactively. I just put down what I stitched on that day, and that's how I keep track of it. Um, sometimes if there's somebody's birthday that I want to stitch for, on, or if there's like some kind of stitching event, I'll put those in the margins so that I'll know. Or if I 
want to FFO something that month, I'll put it in the margin. Um, and this really worked for me. So this year for 2023, I have to remove the, the sticker up here, but this is the planner that I got for this year. Um, it's, um, it has extra months in it, just like the one I just showed you, but, um, and I haven't had a chance at all. Um, I basically lost a day, um, thinking that yesterday was not New Year's Eve. Um, anyways, this is what the spread looks like this time. So there's a box for monthly goals, a box for special dates, um, a checklist for things to do. And then week by week, you can have weekly goals listed here. Um, and then the next page is a monthly spread. So this is what I'll use most of the time. Um, I'll just put retroactively what I stitched on that day. Um, and if I have any goals, I'll use this page. Um, I've also used daily planners, um, those daily monthly planners. I like that too. Um, but you know, there's lots of options out there. You can make your own spreadsheet on, um, on Excel or whatever, whatever works for you. Um, but this is just how I do it. And this is what I've been able to be most consistent with. So, so that's what I do. And, um, yeah. So that's all I have to share with you in this video. Um, I feel like 2022 was one of those years where um, I really had to hold both the successes and the grief in both hands. You know, um, it was a it was a year full of just uh, pressure and um, <laughs> lots of just lots of really interesting things I, I don't need to get on into details here but um, I know I'm not alone in that and which is why I'm mentioning it and um, I'm just so thankful for this stitching community and I, I've said that before but I'll say it again thank you so much for just being here for sitting with me for however long um, my videos take and for being patient with me in my irregular posting schedule and just for reaching out when you can tell that something's bothering me even though I don't mention it um it it just it means it means so much to me so um thank you for a year of kindness and I wish you the best year ahead Bye, everyone. Take care.